Ready to take the plunge with number five? Who is going to fill out the uh, the named characters of our pirate crew here? Our away team, or well, I don't know, however you'd want to consider them to be. Hey, hey, there is Flax Out Gaming. Yes, I am streaming indeed. I was just, I actually had you up on Discord, and we were talking about uh, how we were able to help you out last night on, uh, on the stream online, and how we can do so in our Discord, too. You like numbers, but wanting to be more on the story aspect? I agree, Death Count. I go. Uh, I, I tend more towards role playing than um, than min maxing. Also, I was gonna, I was gonna say at level fifty, Shippo. I I don't know if we if we can get that far. <laughs> at level five, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, do we have a boy or a girl? Let's roll a percentile and find out. 30. Well, all right, we have an almost all-female party. Uh, the only male character is Ethel, who's a male tiefling. We have a female, and let's roll a d10 for the race. Four. One, two, three, four. It is a human Odds or evens for the standard human or the variant human. Here we go. Evens. Evens, it is a standard human. Now for the alignment, we're going to roll two percentile die. That's going to be that's going to give us a coordinate on each of the axes of alignment. 26 and 61. Good and neutral good. By the way, being a human, we are medium sized. What level is he? We're going to roll a percentile and find out. 10. Oh, uh, this would also need to be adjusted, Bubonic. I would like to have the minimum... Uh, I'd like to have the minimum level be 4. So that way, as we're doing tutorials, um, we will have... Everyone will have an archetype, and they'll at least have their first stat bump with a possibility for a feat. So if, uh, if we want to find a way to... Um, because I, I don't want necessarily all, um, you know, up to a 13% chance for there to be a level 4 character. But if we can condense this down and have level 4 be our minimum, and uh, and then maybe spread out the points in a couple other places. Um, and I'll, I'll go through and I'll, I'll look at this spread again, uh, too. But um, just something else to consider at, as, as a continual improvement. Uh, though we rolled a 10 and that's fine because that is going to be level 4 anyway. Level 4 what? I don't know. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter right now. Is this character going to take any feats instead of stat bumps or ability score increments? Or um, increases? Percentile we'll find out. 34? Nope. We're going to take an ASI. We're going to take a stat bump. Dark Wolf says, uh, Ethel's a lucky guy. <laughs> yeah, he is, uh, you know, if this is a, if this is an anime, this is going to be sort of like a rom-com harem. Uh, Flax Out says, I'm doing some changes as we speak, allowing medium armor to make decks usable, which now that I think about it would be great thinking about the dragoon-like archetype. Uh, I would agree. Yeah, Death Count seems like a harem crew. <laughs> I don't know. We'll we'll see. Ethel is kind of an interesting. You know, he's a transmutation wizard. You know, is this going to be like Negima? <laughs> Did we make Negima? <laughs> uh, let's see. What else did we have? Ah, oh, yes, 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 yes. Backgrounds. What is his background? Well, let's roll a thirteen-sided die and find out. Seven. Another hermit. Okay. We have one already. I wonder if they know each other from their hermitage somehow. A hermit 
There are eight different kinds of hermit in the background section. Let's roll a d8 and find out. Eight. Okay. We're going to make a note. What does number eight mean? It doesn't matter. Don't even worry about it. Forget about it. We got a placeholder. Now we're going to scroll down to page two and populate his personality traits, which are 2d8, seven, and five. Then an ideal, a bond, and a flaw with 3d6, four, two, three. Now we can determine what class he is. If you're scratching your head, but but wait, is don't you just say that you're a dwarven wizard? You can, but backgrounds are a big part of your character. It's not just a race and class anymore. It's race, class, and background. And so as we go and explore things, learning that he's a hermit first before he took up his class or during is very important. Plus this builds a little suspense. Let's roll a d12 and figure out which class he is. Or she, I'm sorry, she, she, she. Two. Ooh, we have another bard. Two bards. Okay, so we look at here we look here for bard. We can go odds or evens for College of Lore or College of Valor. Let's roll the d12 again. It's it's odds. So we have a College of Lore bard, and Janet was a College of Valor. Kenshin's your boy. <laughs> Double the sea shanties. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right, now... We have generated a, a human. And, uh, oh, uh, okay, so I, I see what you did uh, for for here. Uh, you, you made uh, adjustments for um, male and female stature. Now, is uh, I, I presume that what you have as male bubonic is the standard. Is this true, bubonic? Okay, so I'm just going to use the standard tables. I'm not really... I think that the, the concept or the term of sexual dimorphism exists, right? It's uh, uh, physical differences between men and women in terms of, like, uh, stature and, you know, height, weight, length, that kind of a thing. Um, oh, read the note. I'm sorry. These are optionals. Um, okay, yep, gotcha. So as long as the default is is what you have classified as male, uh, so that's that could be a consideration if you want to bring if you want to emphasize that more in your campaign, and if you even want to say look, uh, y if you really want to break it down, you say well if you're playing a female character, you get a minus one strength but a plus one dex or I mean that's getting into some third edition territory if you want to really uh, tweak things down like that. Is it bad that you do that? No. I'm, it doesn't offend me. Hopefully it doesn't offend you all. Um, you know, men and women in different races or cultures, I mean, here in fantasy races and such, may very well have different proportions. I don't know. What if we wanted to actually make it, right? So uh, what, if the, what if female dwarves were actually larger than the men, right? I mean, they're already compact as it is, but if you need extra room to carry uh, dwarf babies... What if uh, what if you're exploring sexual dimorphism, and f your female mountain dwarfs are actually, you know, maybe they're about five six inches taller than the men on average, because they need the extra room biologically to carry children. It's up to you. Have fun. It's your world. Think about it. You know, total equality along physical or mental parameters, it doesn't exist in real life, and I'm not saying that in a chauvinistic way. Um, it, it doesn't exist across all cultures, uh, even among uh, different races or among different species. So think about it in your world. This is a good mental exercise. King says dwarves are technically part of the insect family anyway. So the, the, the Thrykreen are cousins to them. 
<laughs> uh, so what are we? Oh, I'm sorry. We had a uh, we had a who man, who man. We're starting at four foot eight, and we're gonna add two d ten inches to her height. We're adding nineteen inches. Okay. Uh, so that is going to be five foot eight. Uh, then we have an extra seven left over. Five foot, five foot fifteen inches. Uh, so six foot three. Ooh, she's a tall drink of water. Yes, she is. Now we're going to take this same 19 and we are going to multiply it by 2d4 and add that result to 110 base weight times three. So we have 57. We're going to add 57 pounds. She's 167 pounds dry weight, All right? She wakes up in the morning, you know, she's just in her jam. She's in her, her like onesie or whatever. Her um her kigurumi. She wakes up in her kigurumi because she can't actually uh you know change into animal form like her friend the druid, and uh, and this is what she weighs. It's before her backpack and her whatever implement she's gonna fight with or anything else. Her age range is gonna be based on a percentile roll. Three. Okay. Aha. So we have a child prodigy, right? Um. So she is. Uh. Think if you've seen uh, Konosuba. Right, you have uh, you have the young girl who's uh, that explosive sorceress. She's a prodigy. She's super good at what she does. Or I don't know. You look at Ash, ten year old boy going out into the world trying to catch Pokemon. Child prodigy. And so that's column one. Then we look at humans. So we are going to be rolling a uh, a d6. Two. So we have... There we go. She is a super smart... Right? She's already gone to college. She's like a Doogie Hauser type. Um, super smart bard. Well, she might be smart. Let's look at her personality. Uh, okay, yep. That that completes that. We are finished with our random number generation. She might be an apprentice of some kind, too. That could be interesting. Or like a... a um, why am I forgetting the name? A squire. Like a bardic squire. Uh, Shippo, so how do you... How do you deal with uh, that? I... I'd ignore him in combat. Because there's nothing I can do. Without being cheesy, so... I'd just beat on his friends. <laughs> Uh, Flax is still nerfing the document, or, or, I mean, not just nerfing, but adjusting the document. Um, hopefully, hopefully, Flax, that we have been giving you some really good, uh, thoughtful, creative criticism on that. You know, very polite, and, but, you know, stern, like, hey, check, check this, balance this, this is overpowered, dude, I see what you're going for, but we gotta bring this in line to be more compatible with a 5th edition, uh, system. There's a second optional change at the bottom. Oh, did I miss something? All right, well, Excel has stopped working. It's restarting. Bubonic, you broke my Excel. All These rows are optional, more realistic, but not a part of the standard game. Oh, well, we have, um, yeah, we had Venerable and Ancient. (laughs) 
They have 80, 160 movement speed, though. They don't need to hide. Well, yeah, I mean, so, so if, uh, oh, Shippo, you're going to hop off now? Hey, uh, take care, Shippo. Thank you for sharing that build. It's, it's a very interesting mechanical build, and I appreciate you, uh, you coming in here and, uh, and taking care of that. Before I go? Oh, before you go. All right. Um, I'll think about it in just a little bit, Bubonic. I want to get through this character here first, and then we can maybe do that in part three. Derek asks, what do you do? I find his family, I find his friends, I drag him through the mud in a closed space, frame them for unspeakable crimes, and force them to go through the nation's army as he builds infamy, trying to somehow work out the plots upon traps upon hopeless circumstances that have been placed upon them. <laughs> he was saying max lifespan of the characters would be. Oh, you lost your... All right. Hey, Shippo, if you remember, come back or join us on Discord. And if you want to share more interesting builds like that, you can do so there, too. Are you, uh, Shippo, are you on our, on our Discord? Uh oh, Flax Out Gaming, you pull the idiot card. Permanently reduce your intelligence score by 1d4 plus 1 to a minimum 1. You can draw one additional card. All right. You're on the disc. Oh, you're Enolf. Got you. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do real quick then is. Dun -dun -dun -dun. This way I know. that. This way I know. Okay, so yep, if we can answer more questions for you, Shippo, let me know. We'll see you there, okay? Have a great night. There's, uh, that's so you can draw again without being penalized, Flax. And uh, Death Count goes for the deck of many things. Oh, Death Count goes into the void. See you around, Shippo. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, Death Count. Draw is not a command, Flex. All right. Where were we now? We filled in our... Oh, yes. We're going to look at... She's a hermit. Why is why is such a young lady escaping the world? Number eight. I was a pilgrim in search of a person, place, or relic of spiritual significance. Ah. Okay. I was a pilgrim in search of a person, place, or relic of spiritual significance. And her background feature is Discovery, which would be very interesting to roleplay through, especially for a character like this. You know, if, if, she's some, if she's some child prodigy in some way, and I don't mean that she's necessarily, she has to be super smart. She might end up being, but um, what did her fresh perspective on the world bring? What did she learn? Or did she prophesy something, right? If she's searching for a person, place, or a relic of spiritual significance, maybe that is her discovery. She had a vision, right? If she's a, a young, innocent lass, um, and uh, and she has, if she wants to bring peace or something, then she there's a relic somewhere out there. Hey, hey, Dark Wolf summoned the skull. So, Dark Wolf. If you go into the tomb and you beat it, I will give you extra experience points because death is waiting for you there. Flax says, stares at the avatar, remembering I'm a wizard, and uses nothing but AoE spells that guarantee some damage. <laughs> Dodge that, you knucklehead. Oh, she's taking me up on the offer. A zombie appears. Can Dark Wolf bring down the zombie? Yep. 
Yes, she does. 13 plus 5 is 18. Oh, you oh, that's right. I'm sorry. That's a disadvantage. Uh even at disadvantage, you still got it. So, here's a uh, double your EXP. Uh flax out. If someone runs in a dungeon, there's a one minute global cooldown on that dungeon. Now, Dark Wolf has to wait five minutes to go back into it, but everyone else has to wait one minute. Yeah, wouldn't that be something, Delcorin? All right, what is her personality? Seven and five. I often get lost in my own thoughts and contemplation, becoming oblivious to my surroundings. And five, I'm oblivious to etiquette and social expectations. So she will just burp, fart, and cuss with everyone else. Wait a minute, is this what we had our other hermit do also? Two? Yes, actually, both our hermits are just completely... This is such a weird anime harem that we've we've developed. This is a rom-com harem D&D adventure. They're both oblivious. Wow. Dark Wolf draws from the deck. Flames, a powerful devil, becomes your enemy. The devil seeks your ruin and plagues your life, savoring your suffering before attempting to slay you. Um, so what I will do uh, for that one, Dark Wolf... Um, what, what did I say for devil before? I think we had it be... Was it epic only? Or I think it might have been anything, because the devil just shows up anywhere and, and harasses you. So, Dark Wolf, if you win your next adventure of some kind, low risk, low reward planes, high risk, high reward epic, anywhere in between, um, I'll give you a bonus. Because you're overcoming the devil. What is her ideal? Power. Solitude and cunt. She's going to be like a trifling lolly, isn't she? Oh, those characters in anime, trifling lollies. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Contemplation. Solitude and contemplation are paths toward mystical or magical power. Flax Out Gaming, it's late and you're on watch. Your party member's been gone a while. Eventually you sense someone or something approaching. You hail the figure, hoping it's your friend. Who who goes there? Stream elements? Is that you? It stops, then moves forward and suddenly responds, Tomb Raid! What do you do? Flax Out Gaming, what do you do? Are we under attack? You're on watch! Dark Wolf wants to go into the forest. Uh, stops on 12... Plus three is fifteen. You defeat the troll, and uh, and so you defeat the devil, and uh, I'll give you some bonus exp. By the way, Norton the Knoll, are you still out there? Norton the Knoll, paging Norton the Knoll. That bot is being a jerk, says Bubonic. <laughs> Flex Out Gaming, thanks for the host, guys. It means a lot to a small streamer like me. <laughs> there, so Flex Out, uh, kind of like, oh, thank you. <laughs> There's a fun one, too. All right, what do we have next for our, our prodigy bard? Two, her bond. I entered seclusion to hide from the ones who might still be hunting me. I must someday confront them. Ooh. Ooh. 
seems like she's lived a very interesting life to this point. You know, what if she's like runaway nobility? She's the heiress to a fortune of merchants or, you know, she's a princess or something along those lines. And so she went into hermitage because of something that's happening. That might explain why she's so educated and perhaps why, uh, why she is seeking power. Death Count, new to the party and wanted to show he's not afraid, draws from the deck. For his foolish act, he is now lost. Only thing keeping him company is his troubling thoughts of never being found. That's true. You walked in, you're like, I hope no one sees me. Pulls from the deck of many things. Now I'll never be seen again. Uh-oh. Ivalon. Is it Ivalon? Would Ivalon shout out TP Crunchy Roll? Oh, see? Death Count, you're now a quest for uh, Dark Wolf. And what is her flaw? Can such a precious creature have a flaw? Yeah, she will. What is it? Number three? I am dogmatic in my thoughts and philosophy. Oh, she's the know-everything kid. I know more than you, Dad. I know more than you, Mom. I know everything in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Everything has to be this way. I don't let my, my corn touch my mashed potatoes when I eat. I don't do it. You don't do that. She's picky. She's picky. Whew, she is a tall child, by the way. Something... Something must have happened, right? Either either she drinks a lot of milk, you know, she's got strong bones, or maybe there's something magical about her. Maybe she's lying about her age. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they just grow them. Uh, they just grow them big where they come from. You know, a bunch of farmers' kids. You know, big, tough, strong. This is this is a really interesting character. What if, what if she's not human? What if she's not human? She says she is. And and who's to say, right? We have a standard human. That's just a plus one and everything. You don't get feats. You don't get skills. You know, you're just a little bit better at everything than everyone else. This could be a very compelling character. I don't know how to respond to that face. Uh, for one, I tend to find myself quite attracted to redheads, but that bow doth give me some suspicious vibes. Raises an arm, redding lightning bolt. <laughs> so, uh, so would Ivalon come back to camp like this? Hey, hey, Dark Wolf, you found Death Count. You found him. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> bubonic one just uh <laughs> oh. flax out just wants to go on an adventure <laughs> all right what do we get for being a hermit also we get medicine and religion we get a tool proficiency with an herbalism kit Oh, what about this? Right? If she comes from some sort of, like, uh, let's say she's still this child prodigy. What if she, like, drank some kind of potion or got involved in, like, she mixed up some kind of an alter self spell. And it, it like, aged her. Right? What if she's actually, I don't know, it was like an, uh, an aging potion. And, I don't know. We, we can think of all sorts of interesting stuff. She's she's a hermit. She's ki maybe kind of a runaway. She joined this crew. Um or <laughs> or if you were uh, do you remember uh the uh the Pirates of Penzance? And you know how there's the one guy who really wanted to be a pirate? And uh and they found a technicality because he was born on a leap year. He wasn't old enough because he's technically only had like whatever, uh, five birthdays or something. Well, what if she was born on a leap year, and so she's actually 44, but she's 11, 
I don't know. Let's have fun with the idea. Or do you just want do you want her to be this uh, an actual uh, like a, a a human child uh, who is who's a runaway or a prodigy? She's out to see the world. She's out seeking power for some reason. There's a ton we can do with this character. <laughs> Flax, you want to try and find us? <laughs> oh, hey, Flax did uh, defeat the treants, by the way. Flax, I did a thing, guys. Realizes I've spent all my spell slots. I need a rest, sadly. <laughs> Bubonic one, yeah, but I don't listen to you. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Languages, we get one of our choice. So, for being a human, you get common, something, and now for being our, our background, we get something else. And we'll also get a scroll case with notes. A winter blanket. Common clothes, an herbalism kit, and five gold pieces. Dark Wolf is a rebellious a woo. Quick, everyone! He used all the spell slots. Get him while he's weak. That's true. You want to get those wizards while they don't have spell slots. What would her discovery have been? Also, is her discovery related to this? Hmm. Now we can, well, for being a human, all she's going to get is plus one to her stats. That's easy enough to remember, so we can just skip right over to Bard. She is going to have, um, oh, by the way, she's going to get 30 feet of movement, which gives her 15 f swim, 15 climb, zero fly. She's going to have four, D8, and she's used zero. And again, you can X out or leave blank or zero out, whatever. She can wear light armor if she chooses. Simple hand crossbows. Long, short swords and rapiers. Flax Out Gaming says so. Ch uh, change charge into a basically a reaction, costing counter into a into a basically a reaction costing counter if surrounded by two or more enemies within five feet. If an attack misses you, you get a counter. If two plus hostiles around you and one misses an attack, use a reaction to attack back. Okay, I, I, I think I get what you're going for. Why do you want the qualifier of two enemies? Or two or more, I should say. Like why wouldn't why wouldn't the character be able to bop one in a in a heads up fight? Tools, we're gonna get three instruments. We are gonna get dexterity and Charisma Saving Throw uh, proficiencies. And we're going to get to choose three skills, but honestly, we're going to get to choose more. I'm going to just leave a note here, because College of Lore is going to give us more. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> So the question is, what type of a weapon would she have? Would she have a little pointy-do rapier? 
Would she would she have something else? Hmm. Let's put in a placeholder. Rapier or simple of some kind. Which could be ranged. Maybe she has a sling or a bow. A diplomat's pack or an entertainer's pack. I think she's more contemplative. That comes with soap too, so she can stay clean. A musical instrument. Leather armor. And a dagger. She's probably not going to be a melee fighter. Fourth level, we get three cantrips. One. Two. And three. Our bonus proficiency is two. And we're going to know seven spells, and we're going to have four and three for our slots. There we go. We're going to get Bardic Inspiration that we'll put down here. We'll get a total number to our Charisma modifier, and we'll, we'll have used zero. We are also going to get... Uh, oh, by the way, this can go away. She is a Jill of all trades, meaning that all of her non-proficient skills are going to get half her proficiency. You guess the two plus is a little too restrictive? Oh, Shippo is back. You found an alternative. So Shippo, are, are you trying to make the ultimate, like the ultimate speedy character? Is is that your personal challenge? Uh, what else do we have? Moo, I need a drink, says Ivalon. Have you have you caught your second wind, Ivalon? Is your spirit back? Are you happy? Bubonic is suggesting 10, 12, 13, 14, 8, 15. Why would you say that uh, that she doesn't have a high wisdom out of curiosity, Bubonic? Is that because of... Uh, is that maybe obliviousness? Is it reflected here, or... If she wants to hide. Well, she, yeah, I think we should definitely have a high dex, by the way. She's an airhead. Well, if she's an airhead, that might be a low intelligence instead. In that case, you might want to swap wisdom for intelligence. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, yep, we have our Bardic College at three. And, oh, we get Song of Rest also. which are D6s right now. We are going to get expertise in two skills and an ASI, but we already know that we're going to be taking that as a stat bump. College of Lore, we get three more, uh, we get six skills to be proficient in, and we're also going to get cutting words. So we can call this uh, B.I. or Cutting Words. You're trying to find an ultimate speedy kiting character. and um, So what else do you need help with, Shippo? 
And and are, are you just building this as a thought experiment? Like, should we just go to take it to level? Should we just take it to level twenty, or or what? What is the context in which you're trying to build this character? No, we don't get magical secrets just yet. We just get skills. So it'll be an anime protagonist character. I often get lost in my own thoughts and contemplation, becoming oblivious to my surroundings. And I'm oblivious to etiquette and social expectations. She wants power. Solitude and contemplation are paths towards mystical or magical power. She's trying to hide from the ones who might be hunting her. So... I definitely think deception. Stealth. If she wants power... There's two... I think having if she's the loner, right? If she's if she's this child prodigy, she believes in herself and her flaw is I'm dogmatic in my thoughts, no one can change her mind here. I don't think she has to worry too much about any of her wisdom. I, I think wisdom can be a dump stat for her. So maybe she goes Arcana if she wants mystical power. Um, because so we're basing this off of her personality. Contemplation, contemplation. She's probably investigation, and we get two more. She's hiding people who are hunting her. And she wants. So I definitely think deception. I don't think she's an intimidator. Performance might help. Maybe performance and persuasion. I don't think she's worried about history because she's looking forward. She's using what is here in front of her to, to act in the now and to look forward. And I don't know if the natural world really is something she's worried about. But if she's hiding also, maybe she should uh, get some acrobatics. Maybe persuasion to get people to take her in. And... Acrobatics. I don't know. If you think differently, if you think her six skills should be allocated differently, let me know, okay? Okay. And then, of course, we're going to get to have her be an expert in two of them. Uh, sorry, so let me get back over here. Shippo was asking something here. Um, how do the movement speed increases apply when you have both walk and fly speed? If you have 30 walk and 20 fly as a dragonborn with dragon wings, Bloomstalker specifies walking speed. Mobile says speed in general. Does mobile apply to both walk and fly speed? Here, we'll go to it real quick. We'll do it. We'll just look at it one at a time here. You're exceptionally speedy and agile. You gain the following. Your uh, speed increases by 10 feet. Um... Under movement, okay. Fourteen, seventeen, and one eighty one.
how far you can move when traveling and fighting, and 171. I'm going to flash over to that. It will flash. Watch out. Speed. Every character and monster has a speed, which is the distance in feet that the character or monster can walk in one round. This number assumes short bursts of uh, energetic movement in the midst of a life-threatening situation. Um, so there's travel pace. Hmm. Let's check out the sorcerer. So in this one, it says you gain a flying speed equal to your current speed. So according to Dragon Wings itself, your flying speed, as long as you have this, is based off your normal walking speed. King is right about the void card. LZB, it's good to see you and thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. Sorry, I'm a little bit, uh, I'm, I'm contemplating a, uh, a conundrum of uh, Shippo here.
Yeah, I, I saw you on uh, I saw you on Discord, Alzi, because um, <laughs> you had the you had the sad face when we were voting on uh, which RPG to play, or I, I'm sorry, on which uh, on which specifics of vampire. Sorry, I'm coming back here. Um, Hey, Ultron, good to see you. Sorry, I'm not too responsive. I, I've been looking some stuff up here for Shippo. For DM Fiat to get out of the void. <laughs> I mean, they could always just ask for a res, please. You know, they, they just sort of self-destruct and regenerate somewhere. Uh, well, Shippo, um... I think that all of those would stack. You just have to watch out because things like what you brought up, like Gloom Ranger or whatever, Gloom Stalker, might specifically give you a speed of some kind. Or certain spells or effects might say you get a... You get a swim speed of 30 feet. Or something along those lines. In fact, if we look at... Um, you know, so if we look here at the boots of striding and springing... Um, now, this one doesn't pull you back to being 30 feet, but it does it does set your walking speed at a minimum of 30 feet, unless your walking speed is higher, and your speed isn't reduced if you're encumbered or wearing heavy armor. In addition, you can jump three times the normal distance, though you can't jump farther than your remaining movement would allow. Um, so, if you wanted to stack all of these uh, to make, you know, to kind of thread the needle between all these classes... Um, you said it's DM's choice. It looks like fast movement, unarmored movement, and the mobile feet at least apply to all speeds you have. Uh, it... I believe so. I mean, if we look at Barbarian, right? Yeah, this is just... Um, this just says your speed increases by 10 feet while you aren't wearing. So that would be... Because, look, your your climb and your swim is based off your run. Your And there is a specific run speed. But this is kind of the, de the default run. And you might have a qualifier, such as a spell or something, that will either just say you get fly 60, or it will be based, kind of like the Dragon Wings and Sorcerer, off of your speed. And so if you're enhancing your speed, then, you know, the Fast Movement Barbarian will put this to 40, 20, 20, and then something else. Starting at second level, your speed increases by 10 feet while you're not wearing armor or wielding a shield. This bonus increases when you reach certain monk levels, as shown in the monk table. Uh, by the way, something to watch out for with this character build too, Shippo that for as quick as it is, it is easy for uh, for villains or whatever monsters or even um, you know monsters or humanoid NPCs to simply say, I wait until the character gets within range of my crossbow and I'll fire. 
Um, so if you're oh. never in range of the crossbow, hey, hey, thank you, Buddha. Now, if you're never in range of, of them shooting a magic missile at you or something, that's fine. But that character can still succumb to held, or not, not held, you, you don't hold in uh, this edition. Uh, can succumb to readied actions just as easily. So keep that in mind as well. And especially for these speed boosts, you're not wearing any armor. So you're going to have 10 plus uh, dex. You know, your, your natural dex. So you'll be a little squishier, and it's just going to force your enemies to ready actions and, and react to what you're doing. Also, if you're moving with such incredible speed, I would also I would watch out, because you might uh, be able to pepper down enemies after a while. Let's say that you kill some scouts, and uh, then there's, there's going to be evidence of some kind, possibly, of how you're doing it. Your enemies could get wise and start uh, bringing people who know hold person or something else along those lines. Or he's just going to invoke nuke them all tactics. If you like hiding in bushes, up in trees, you're, you're moving all around very quickly. Um, if your enemies want you dead, they're just going to they're gonna like uh, blow up the earth, right? They're just going to scour the land. Or they're going to put landmines or traps or other ways... Like as they adapt and they learn that you know you're super fast, you're a glass cannon, right? You don't really have armor. I don't know what you want your hit points to be. Um, maybe con is your secondary stat if you go like dex and con or something. But bear that in mind too. Um, that if you're like super de duper fast and and you are getting advantage in these first couple, uh, in these first couple fights, if your enemies are paying attention and uh, there will always be more enemies, you're going to want to watch because they're going to adapt to that to that speed and your tactics. And you might find that uh, you're going to find yourself under uh, hold person spells, slow spells. Um, they're going to set traps everywhere um, to try and slow you down or landmines or other things like that. Or, again, they're just going to take a bunch of AoE spells, and as soon as you get in range, they're going to hold their actions until you get close enough to nuke them. Oh, well, so that they nuke you. <clears throat> Death Count comes back as a female goblin fighter. Seems good. You'll be unleashing version 1.1 of Lancer tomorrow. Well, yeah. If you do, uh, put it up and let us know. Ready to actions make sense. Got a new character concept. Uh, as a DBZ fighter, going to take some time to summarize it. Okay. Uh, where were we now? Oh, yes, we are... Uh, so we chose some skills, and... We just put in our... We just put in our skills here for our, our prodigy. We have a child prodigy bard, who's kind of, in, in, in anime terms, she's kind of the trifling lolly, right? Uh, she, she's probably a runaway of some kind, maybe from a, a noble house... Which explains how she's so well educated, um, and she also has some powerful ambitions. Oh, we get zero dark vision. Um, she is oblivious, um, except to medicine, but that's fine. Uh, so I definitely, I think, I definitely think that she should have a starting fifteen charisma. She's probably not wise. I think that she should have a dump score and wisdom of eight. I do think that she's intelligent. I do think that she's dexterous. And whatever she did, whatever she did to grow, um, she she miss a uh, uh, spell misfired. She took a potion, or look, she just drank her milk growing up. But she has at least average strength. So if we have a spread like this... I don't know, I, I think that uh, especially because of her, her age or even like her training, she would be a tad more dexterous than, uh, than have a, uh, a higher con. 
LZ says a lolly Mo Mozart. <laughs> a lolly Mozart. Mozart. Oh, wow. That, that The O and the O. Hello, English. Lolly Mozart. That's almost like a, a tongue twister, right? Lolly Mozart. Lolly Mozart. Lolly Mozart. Alzi wants her to be named Amadea. Sure. Do we have a last name? Now, with her being a, a, a standard human, strength goes to 11, dex goes to a 14, con goes to a 13, intelligence goes to a 15, wisdom goes to a 9, and charisma goes to a 16. And she is going to be receiving a full uh, stat bump. And I think that uh, we're just going to put her charisma up because this is really where she shines. Now that we have that, we can go through and calculate some things. A rare or rarer magic item with which you're proficient appears in your hands. Nice, Flax. Uh, Buddha Belly wants her last name to be... Um, Rita, Amadea Rita. Amadea Rita. So, Buddha Belly, do you have a bottle of water in front of you? Is that what this is? Presumably, Flax. Alzi, I'm glad that you asked. There you go, Alzi. Um, Buddha, you want uh, you want uh, Dark Wolf's last name, <laughs> and you do have a bottle of water in front. Of hey, it's a nautical theme, right? So if you want what Dark Wolf said, Harukaze. There we go, Amadea Harukaze. We have a zero, two. One, two, minus one, four. What is she going to be really good at doing? I think she's going to be really good at hiding. And she's going to be really good at telling lies. She is still a kid and she's on the run from something. So running and hiding, I think, are going to be her expertises. You're very welcome, Alzi. There's some really good stuff there. If you look at the ink variety, inky, I think is it is what it is. It's not form fillable, but it's super thematic. If you like Cthulhu or tentacles or Eldric horror from the sea. Okay, now bards. Bards are interesting. Um Saving throw is zero. However, it is zero because we have Jill of all trades. This is actually going to be one because she gets half her proficiency in the skills in which she is not proficient. Two and two is four. Same with acrobatics. Sleight of hand is going to be three. And stealth is double proficiency. So four plus two is six. Con saving throw is one. Intelligence uh, saving throw is two. Arcana, 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 Arcana. Four, four, and four. Three and three, right? So two because of her intelligence plus half proficiency up here. Her saving throw is minus one for wisdom. However, these are going to be zero. Zero, 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 and one for medicine. Charisma, four and two is six. Same with persuasion. Five for performance, five for intimidation. 
Deception is double, so that's four and eight. There we go. Now, initiative is a dex. Uh, it is a uh, a dex check. And if we look here, I don't know if Dorgrim is still around. This says to any ability check you make that doesn't already include your proficiency bonus, initiative is an ability check based on dex. So she would actually have a plus three initiative because of Jill of all trades. Alzi. <laughs> oh, oh, how lewd. <laughs> Her armor class, uh, she has leather armor, which is 11 plus two is 13. There we go. Passive Perception is 10. Now, this this would not benefit because it is not a check. This is just a static number. Hit points. At level 1, she gets her maximum 8. Then she has 3 other levels of half, whoops, of half plus 1. Plus all four levels of her con bonus. That's how we calculate your hit points at whatever level. So we have four plus 15 is 19. Plus eight is 27. Whoops. If she's using a, uh, let's if, if we collapse this, we go down to equipment. If she gets any simple weapon that could include ranged, she would probably use something like a hand or a, a, like a crossbow. Um, Probably a hand crossbow. Although that's technically a martial range. She's proficient. Eh, if we're sticking to that, let's give her a light crossbow for right now. And she can upgrade later. Now that's dex. So that's two plus her proficiency. She has a plus four to hit. Same with her dagger because it's a finesse weapon. This is 1d8 plus two piercing. 1d4 plus two piercing. Okay, so aside from adding her spells, she's pretty well finished. Very interesting character. Lots of, lots of things to think about. How did she come to be with all these people? What is her role on the ship? Is she using him to hide? Is she kind of um? She's a player character, but is she kind of like an escort, right? Maybe she bought a uh, passage on the ship and something happens during the campaign... So she's not a member of the crew, but she's competent. Is this some kind of a secret, right? Did something happen with a, a magical experiment or a potion? And so she walks around like this, but really she's just kind of a, chi a, a spoiled child prodigy. Is she a noble? Um, you know, a daughter of... Is she an heiress of someone? Lots of things to think about. We have a really cool lineup. So here we have a female brass dragonborn... Pirate background, um, College of Valor bard, who turned a new leaf, by the way. She's lawful good, despite being a pirate with a bad reputation. You want to talk about Ruruni Kenshin that we were doing earlier? Flax out's going for a roleplay prompt, I see. Presence of Coda, is that you? It moves forward and shouts out, Chef Frank! Lowers my shiny new staff of lightning bolts. Well, this is a shocking revelation. A <laughs> good role play. <laughs> um. Oh, look at that, Dark Wolf. You have a uh, you have a knight. There we go. <laughs> Dark Wolf. 
Alzi, I never played a really arrogant character. I think a prodigy would work well for that. Oscar Wilde type. Yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking that she's... Um, I, I, from her personality, right, Alzi? If we look down here, I, I see, I see that she's just, she's the trifling lolly stereotype from anime, right? Uh, well, no, I'm sorry, not this one, not this one, huh. this one. In her personality, she's, she's lost in her own thoughts. She's oblivious to etiquette, so she'll say like rude or earthy things. She'll burp, fart, and cuss. It doesn't really matter. Because she's so involved in her own thoughts. She seeks power. Solitude and comp contemplation are paths towards mystical or magical power. So maybe she's run away. Maybe she has a taste of the arcane and she wants more. I entered into seclusion to hide from the ones who might still be hunting me. I must someday confront them. And I'm dogmatic in my thoughts and philosophy. So it's the same, it's the same thing every day. And if we come back here to personality and backgrounds, this is her hermit background. Number eight, I was a pilgrim in search of a person, place, or relic of spiritual significance. Well, that could very well go into her discovery aspect, her discovery feature, since this is super roleplay. Like, discovery, in my opinion, is a very powerful background, because you work directly with a DM, and you are extremely relevant to the story. So she must have discovered something. And what is it? Well... She has people chasing after her because of it, and so she must have booked passage, or she tried to pass herself off as uh, as this kind of a her as a hermit, or uh, or she she entered into hermitage. I'm sorry. So she passes herself off as maybe either again she's she's been drinking her milk, uh, or this is an illusion. Maybe she keeps up some sort of an alter self spell or something um, to try and hide, despite her age. See also Weishne. Does this Gloomstalker passive only apply to one attack per round? Uh, I don't. I don't know, Shippo. I don't have that information in front of me. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you you put it there. I was looking at the wrong Alzi statement for a, a bookmark. So about at the start of your first turn of each combat, you your walking speed increases by ten feet, which lasts until the end of that turn. If you take the attack action on that turn, you can make one additional weapon attack as part of that. Um, yes. So the very first, the very first turn of combat, you get a 10 extra speed. After that, it's gone for the rest of the combat until your next, um, you know, of, uh, it, uh, it says of each combat. Unless it, unless you, it, does it say combat round or... But if it says that at the start of your first turn, each combat. So it's going to allow you to, like, strike first. And then after that, it goes to normal. Yeah, it's because it says if you take the attack action on that turn, on that first turn of combat, you make one additional weapon attack as part of that action. If it hits, the target takes an extra 1d8 of that uh, damage of the weapon damage type. Uh, JT, yes. Yeah, because it, it's saying it, it's just an extra 1d8. Well, well, in, in this case, I, it'll be, yeah, it could be ranged or whatever. It's just, it's giving you bonus damage of whatever, you know, bludgeoning, piercing, slashing. Harbored Foliage, good to see you back. Sorry, I'm just catching up here in chat. Harbored Foliage comes in kind of rustling around. Uh, yo, what up, chat? Bubonic, you think that she's going to be a tsundere? Maybe she could be a tsundere. What if she's kind of sassy, like, um... Oh, shoot, what's her name from Final Fantasy IX? The, the little summoner. The, the summoner girl. She has the bow in her hair. Um, why am I not remembering? Shame on me. Aiko, that's right, Flax out, thank you. She could be like Aiko. Harbored Foliage, the drunk anime ant with the, the serious side. That's, uh, that's almost like, uh, maybe like Janet, right? She's lawful good. Like, she looks after you, but she she's not afraid to get into a tussle. <laughs> hey, 
Have her drink Mongolian fermented yak milk. Then she gets strong bones and drunk at the same time. <laughs> nope, it's not super long-lasting, Shippo. It's only on the first round of, of the combat. So your DM would have to say, okay, here, uh, combat begins. That's your first round. And if you don't use it, you lose it. And you have to wait until combat ends and until another combat ensues. Because let's say you, you run out of firing range of your enemy. That doesn't mean that combat's over. It might take an hour of running away or something along those lines. It is a... Yeah, it, it is a, a fantasy world. Maybe it doesn't happen that often, or maybe she tried. Uh, maybe she tried being an adult, and she tried drinking some of this uh, fermented yak milk, and, sh and uh, she liked it or she didn't. But she's manipulating people in some way. Yeah, it, it's not garnet slash dagger. It was Ico that I was looking for. Don't get you started on FF9 no uh, knowledge, and you prefer Eris from Seven says plunder loot. You want a caster like Vivi says Flax. You're, hey, no problem for the clarification. Uh, go on, Shippo. I'm reading. Uh, so anyway, we have Janet. We have Ethel. By the way, this is this is if we're talking about anime or whatever. This is like a romantic comedy harem anime. We have Ethel Salk, who's our only male uh, crew member here, and then we uh, and so he's a tiefling, a transmutation wizard. Um, though, of course, he is he is an honorable man. He is lawful good. Uh, he is a holy man. Then we have Malda, um, who is a hill dwarf, uh, fae, uh, fae blade, <laughs> uh, you know, bay blade, fae blade. Um, she was also a hermit. And so maybe these two uh, can get along, right? She's hiding because uh, she was exiled for a crime she didn't commit. Meanwhile, I don't know. <laughs> She says she's looking for something about her discovery, but people are chasing her. Maybe these two, uh, maybe, so maybe uh, Amadea here has some kind of a bond with Malda as a, as like a, an older sister or a motherly or an auntish figure. And then we have Shiana, who might also go as O for Oceana, is a coastal druid. Well, isn't that convenient? Uh, and hey, it was all randomly rolled. A coastal druid who is kind of the ship's scout and storyteller. That is her, her main focus as entertainer. And check out the passive perception on her. Hubba hubba. So there we go. We have a party. Yay. So tomorrow, what we're going to do is bring the party together and make a party character sheet. We're going to make a character sheet for the entity of the party. And we're going to go over their strengths and weaknesses and things like that. And then, and then, we're going to make a campaign through which these characters can run. And of course, it'll be nautical, maybe piratical themed, something along those lines. Maybe she found evidence that proved Malda was innocent. Yeah, and that could tie her into uh, whatever this great discovery is. And what if her discovery is what Ethel is searching for, right? Look at this. I would die to recover an ancient relic of my faith that was lost long ago. Well, she's kind of on a pilgrimage. Maybe she even, maybe her family uh, is part of this church or is a major sponsor of it. So she has a bond with Ethel. Though I think these two would get along uh, more, like, uh, a little bit more deeply. But she has shared some kind of a, a, a pilgrimage that is kind of relatable to Ethel. Oceana and Malda have a connection because we have, we have kind of a disgraced druid. Um, and we have a fey, um, we have a fey warlock. And so these two can also get together. Like, Malda is going to be really popular. She might end up being a central figure. Janet probably by default is more of the leader because she's more nautical by default. But she's rough and tumble. And oh, look at this too. She's the predator and other ships are my prey. Well, if we look over here to our, uh, to our, uh, to our, uh, 
you know, our uh, our very Sundere or whatever Lolly power, solitude and contemplation are paths towards mystical power. Uh, so you know they are, you know, they're seeking power or you know dominance in some way. But yeah, we'll uh, I will have a write up on how these characters have gotten together and the things that they're doing. Uh, so these are all good ideas. You don't, uh, let's see, Harbard says you don't get an extra bonus weapon attack, just the three, I believe, four including any opportunity attacks. Um, so you're pretty sure you get a lot of extra attacks using two weapons. Uh, tell you what, because we finished this character... Uh, Shippo, let me take a break to get a little bit uh, more something to drink, and uh, I will, I will, I will look at this. And when we come back, and it's, 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 it's um, part three. It's open. I'm not going to be doing anything else. I'm not, I'm not having to do anything else on this screen, and we can, we can explore that and dig into it and, and go from there. So I'll be right back. Get up, stretch, refresh yourself, use the restroom if you have to, and uh, and we'll return.
ocean and the tide pulls out It's a name we see but there is no doubt That the lighthouse won't keep shining the night To warm a lonely sailor The lightning strikes and the wind cuts cold Through the sailor's bones to the sailor's soul Till there's nothing left that he can hold Except the lowering ocean
cried herself to sleep and woke up in the dark with a sky full of luminescent stars. The spark and they shone and kept her company for the fight and she was wishing she had someone to talk to. to mariners Okay, I have returned. I was doing a little bit of research there. King looks like he added a cool link. Volvo, thank you for the host and welcome. Laws on me. It is good to see you. Um, yeah, we're talking about monks, multiple attacks, and how things stack or don't. And uh, let's see. King, I'm not trying to put you to sleep. Uh, I didn't know the sea shanty got too, uh, too tender. Harvard foliage. Maybe you want a little D&D. ASMR. I can speak very softly into the microphone. As you roll the d20, it tumbles across the battle mat. Gently bumping into one of the figurines, it wobbles back and forth, but doesn't fall over. Your eyes fall upon the results. A 13. A smile creeps across your face. That's exactly what you needed in order to hit the monster. You draw your sword and charge forward. There you go. There's some D&D &D ASMR. You got home late and I was happy to see the stream still going. Hope everyone's doing well. Thumbs up, yes. Yep, flax. It can. It, you you do have to watch it if if you're trying to play the multi-class game. If you're trying to play the multi-class game, you have to be careful with the wording. Nope, flax out. What it allows you to do is to be kind of like a monk if you're not a monk, or even if you're a monk and you take it. I guess, well, no, because um, you can use a monk weapon like a sickle to get other than bludgeoning damage if you wanted slashing or piercing with a dagger or a sickle. Action surge is broken as all get out. <laughs> uh, since we have a bit of a nautical theme going here, I figured I'd show you all. I, I've shown it once because it's, uh, it's a great narrative story in itself. Uh, but I figured I'd play for you all the Mariner's Revenge. Um, 
And uh, afterwards, uh, probably a song that might be uh, more amusing to King. Uh, not that A Tale of Revenge uh, isn't necessarily um, already amusing. Um, but there's, a, another, uh, there's another song that I can play by the same group, too, that has a nautical theme to it. And yes, if any of you love uh, min-maxing and such... Uh, Shippo is trying to get a character with maximum speed and maximum attacks. So a level 20 character, no holds barred, um, just like a, a speedster and, and like a super, like super attacky build. So if you have any recommendations for Shippo and you like, you like doing the number crunching, uh, this is, this could be a fun project. Yeah, light light is just an indicator that means dual wielding. It's it's light enough that you can carry two. But it really just uh, light uh, the dual wield just kind of lets you tag something uh, with that with a bonus action. Now monk already gives that to you. So if you're a monk and you, let's say I don't know you're a monk ranger and you're dual you're dual wielding sickles, which are also monk weapons, you're still using your bonus action to either get the monk strike or you're getting the the dual wield. So I'm going to disappear for the, the duration of the video because it's a lot of fun. It'll help get us in the mood thinking nautically or nautily. I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's up to you. Two mariners, a ship's sole survivors in this belly of a whale. Its ribs are ceiling beams, its guts are carpeting. I guess we have some time to kill. You may not remember me, I was a child of three, and you a lad of eighteen. But I remember you. And I will relate to you how our histories in a way. At the time you were a rake and a rascal about spending all your money on boys and out. Oh, you had a charming air, all cheap and debonair. My widowed mother found. Reclaimed our small estate, and my poor mother lost her mind. <laughs> 